Uh, okay, you're listening to Weekend Breakfast and we're going to talk about Aston Villa now because it's looking very likely that this early season prediction will actually come true. I think I'll be proven right that Villa will finish above Spurs by the end of the season and make the Champions League spot. Really good team, love the way they're set up. Um, will they go in the transfer market in Jan to improve on what they've already got? I like a lot of their players. I like the, the way their fullbacks are from Dinya to Matty Cash are used. Got a really strong midfield, Douglas Louise and obviously John McGinn. Ramsey could be back soon, the young lad. And the forward line picks itself pace and power. I think they will finish above Spurs and then that will be an extraordinary achievement uh, if they made Champions League football, which I think they will, Villa. Fair enough, Cass. You said that on the 19th of November when Spurs were above Villa in the league. Yeah. That's a great wee prediction all the way back. Um, right? Well, it's nice when you get them right. You get a good few wrong as well, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, I, it wasn't. It was more. I felt Villa a mo- bit more of a complete team than Spurs. That was what was my argument. And yes, yeah, Spurs started the season brilliantly. Um, but I just felt something was developing. And the way that Villa. Had a unity in the squad, um, a lot of set. You could pick their lineup pretty quickly. And Unai Emery has played this type of football for a long time. Not that Postecoglou hasn't. He's done it in Scotland, which is a different league. But Unai Emery's been in obviously France. He's done it in Spain. He's been in England and and you know used his tactic. His record at Arsenal wasn't that bad. Yeah. You know, it wasn't. You know, in in some ways, he was quite unfortunate to lose his job. But it's benefited Villa. Villa have got. I mean, people like Watkins. Watkins up front have been tremendous for them this year. Massive. Martin is in goal. Brilliant. Absolutely number one keeper this year. He, I can't think of keepers played as well as him, week in, week out. And by the way, when they were 2 0 up the other week and he mm-hmm. came off at half time, 45 minutes, and then Villa conceded too. Um, you know, it, they're, they're, a, they're a good side. I mean, disappointment in, in midweek. But they're capable of turning that round. And again, Martinez wasn't in the side. No. You know, he was it, suspended for that game. Yeah, well, he's a big loss to them. Yeah. You know, whether it's um, sometimes for injury or whatever, hopefully he's recovered and he's back playing again quick um, because he has been outstanding in goal. He yeah. really has. Yeah. Villa are seven points above Spurs, who have a game in hand. Villa still have three games to play. Spurs have four. Are you still confident that it'll be Villa to finish in that? Yeah, absolutely. Spot, yeah? Well, well, it's even better now than it was in November. That you know, Villa were, were behind on them. Uh, Villa are in a great place. Um, and be interesting to see what happens this summer as well. You know, again, it's a bit like I mentioned with Spurs about their recruitment was good last year, going into this summer. Villa were likewise. You know, Villa, if they get it right again and add another one or two players to that already group, the group they've got, be a really good team again next year. I remember sitting here with you covering for Natalie at some point last season. There was such a, an appreciation for Eddie Howe in Newcastle looking like they were going to get yeah. Champions League football at that time. Do you worry that there could be this case for for Aston Villa next season if they are to get Champions League football? Again, it's a new experience taking on another competition at the highest level. How there might be a slight drop-off? Well, yeah, I think definitely it comes with... It affects... You know, the club, it does. But then Newcastle had a horrendous run of injuries as well. And, and let's let's face it, Newcastle were really unlucky not to get through on the group. They were literally right at the death. They got toppled and that got them knocked out of a very tough group. They weren't in an easy group. You know, yeah. PSG were in there, AC Milan, Dortmund. Dortmund are ended up, you know, playing the Champions League final. Yeah. Got a chance. Yeah. You know, so let's remember that Newcastle were in a hell of a tough group. But it will affect Villa, but Villa will, I'm sure, the manager will be well prepared for European football and Premier League football next year. OK, and the other two o'clock kick-off this afternoon, Chelsea will host West Ham in a London derby with both clubs chasing European football. Ahead of the game, manager Maurizio Pochettino for Chelsea said stupid rumours about his future need to end, but admits he does not know if he and his staff will beat the club next season. I have one year more contract here and no one say nothing. Suppose that I'm going to be here. Only if, you know, when then it's finished the season and someone say to me, ciao, you know, uh, because we don't know at the moment. I suppose that I have one year more contract and I'm going to be here. But, you know, enough is about to uh, stupid rumors, you know, because uh, you need to ask the club if the club want me to, to keep going or not. No, not to write things that have no sense, you know? Maurizio Pochettino there. Cash, you can't 
not focused on the fact that there's been an element of progress towards the end of the season. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, like I said, I was at the game Thursday night, and um, the atmosphere was good at Chelsea. Way more positive than I've been in, in previous games. Okay, it was Spurs. It was a London rival. It was a big game for them, but but Chelsea were good, and you can see there's as the teams got sort of going in the last few weeks. They've by the way, they've missed some chances in games. They should have way more points. Chelsea should be challenging the uh, the top four quite comfortably this season with the amount of chances I've seen them have week in week out. I actually feel a little bit brighter about Chelsea now, coming towards the end of this season. Um, Caicedo and Gallagher in midfield, I thought that was a really good partnership. Uh, I'll be interested to see what Jackson's like, Nicholas Jackson, next year. How do you teach that, though, Cass? I mean, you talk about the chances. Well, he's only young. He's only 22. Yeah, but where do, where do you then learn to at an age to be better or to finish your chances? Well, I think Didier Drogba joined Chelsea at 22. Right. And he had an indifferent uh, uh, first season at Chelsea. Um, and then in that next season, when he was 20, 23, he then got going and progressed. And Chelsea would didn't wouldn't have Chelsea fans didn't think they were getting the player they got by the you know it's called getting, as you get more experience, you get better, you improve, get a bit of confidence. Uh, I think Nicholas Jackson's got some talent. I think he, one thing he hasn't got that he needs to really be conscious of is what's around him. See the picture. Because there's times when he's in front of goal, he doesn't have to try and score. Yeah. There's a better option on. I think his choice-making is sometimes bad, but he always gets chances, yeah. always. And he doesn't shy away from them. So I actually feel like Chelsea are in a better... But on the on the right's a decent player. Cookeraya played really well against Spurs and feels like he's settling into this Chelsea team. Chelsea have got a whole list of injuries as well at the back. You know, think of Rhys James back. Think of Fofania being back at the Chelsea back line. Yeah. You know, there's there's good things uh, that are there as well. And I I actually think Chelsea will be a much better team next year. Yeah, there was that young energy too. And then you looked at the bench in that Spurs game. They had like an average of sixteen Premier League games. Yeah, you know, be- between them of all the players on the bench. So there's the there's the real inexperienced side there too. But then the future looks bright. Do you think Poch will be in the dugout next season? I think he'll be given the the chance to start. The, look, if it doesn't go well in the early months, any anyone can guess on what's going to happen at Chelsea. Yeah. But I do think summer. And we don't quite know what funds they've got or what they have to do because of financial fair play. It's been a bit of a struggle for the club to come to terms with what's happening around them. But I do think there is a, there's a, there is an improvement. It's not been dramatic, but it's been a slow burner. But I think Chelsea fans are a bit more optimistic about their team going into next year. I think you're right. We heard that midweek, midweek too. Cash, you've got to go now. You've got yes, to go catch a train. Uh, enjoy the Liverpool game again. Spurs, Cass is heading up there. Be nice if you see him on the train, OK? <laughs> He looks lovely today. I'm not on the train. What are you driving there? <laughs> I'm going in car, yeah. Oh, yeah. posh, OK. Uh, Cass, thank you so much. Have a good time today. It's a mini. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'll get you there in no See time. See you later. Bye. Uh, coming up next on Weekend Sports Breakfast, we will be joined by an Ipswich fan. Somebody has finally arisen. Talk Sport Breakfast. Waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6am on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.